everybody and welcome to another edition of Joe's Rod Shop Podcast. Uh, yeah, we got a great show lined up for you guys today. But first, remember, click that subscribe button, click that like button, leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, on to today's show, and this is the one I was really excited about. In the 1940s, there was a guy by the name of Preston Tucker. Now, Preston Tucker was responsible for a car named the Tucker more the one that's actually best known is called the tucker 48 which they made 50 cars of okay now a while back we had a t- we had an episode with rob Ida, and he had actual tuckers sitting inside the shop now while we were doing that discussion he was telling me that he actually deals with the tucker family and i went what um and they actually still producing some parts for specialized parts for the tuckers so it's taken me some time but i got hold of of Sean Tucker. Now, Sean Tucker is the great, great grandson of Preston Tucker. In 1988, a movie came out with Jeff Bridges called Tucker, The Man and His Dreams. Now, Sean tells us about the whole history. I mean, do you guys understand that there's not a lot of people in the world that name is literally, family name is literally on a car. I mean, there's not a lot of them out there. Um, so it's great history. This is a great episode. Uh, Sean's a really cool guy. This is a great episode. So we talked to Sean and he's telling us about how it was growing up with the family and the Tucker name and your movie and everything that went into it. This is a great one. Enjoy the show. And we are live with Sean Tucker. Sir, welcome for, welcome on the show. Man, it's really yeah. great to talk to you. I'm quite excited about this one. <laughs> All right, I'm happy to be here. So, I mean, you part of one of the most famous car families in the world. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's probably true. Um, it's uh, from a day-to-day perspective, it doesn't seem to affect us too much. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm certainly proud to be a part of it. So, and I, I mean, how, tell me about how how old were you when the movie and everything came out? I was eight, so that was 1988. I mean, that must have been crazy. Just that, that whole scenario and, and all everything when and everything came, went live, you know? Yeah, it was, it was definitely um, the point at which I kind of realized, even, you know, I was pretty young, but uh, that uh, there was kind of a bigger story behind, you know, just going to see a car that had your name on it, you know, somewhere down the road. So exactly. Was, uh, well, there's... Definitely kind of, there's literally probably like 20 people in the world that actually have their name, <laughs> their surname yeah, on a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, I, I, I've uh, said this before, but the, um, when I was a kid, I real young, when I was like four or five, we would go to uh, places that had Tuckers and I thought everybody had that. Like everybody just had, you know, some what? car that had their name on it. So it was, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of interesting. My brother and I joke about that now, but uh, so yeah, fun. so. That, yeah. that was, and I mean, how was it? I mean, in, in a family, because I mean, look, I, I, I don't know how accurate the movie was. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I've heard there was a lot of stuff that was added in from for a TV or more for a movie effect. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, so that, that was your grandfather, if I'm not mistaken. Or was it your uh, great grandfather? was my great grandfather. Great grandfather, yeah. His son John was my grandfather, which they definitely made some adjustments for the movie. Um, yeah. They're, they're short one child <laughs> so Preston had more one more one more child um, and my grandfather during the building of the car was was a teenager um, mm-hmm. in the movie he's shown as a little kid because they uh, they wanted to have kind of a little kid as part of the story so they made that adjustment but the kind of the the, the root you know the core of the story is 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 fairly accurate about how things progressed and, and certainly the timing I mean I think one thing that kind of puts it in in perspective is kind of how much how much transpired in like a really short amount of time yeah. so i mean they started kind of working you know 40 early to mid 47 and by the end of 48 so just you know just under two years ish they had done all the designs for the cars built 50 of them at well close to 50 and uh at that point they were putting preston on trial for fraud and and yeah. you know, a bunch of executives so it's uh the amount of the amount of effort that went to making you know, these small amount of cars is pretty substantial. But I mean, that that roll on from there, I mean, that must have had a huge impact, especially the, the, the trials and stuff. Um, you no, know, because I mean, that dragged on for years, didn't it? 
not not too long. So there was there was uh, there was a mistrial, and there was another trial. So the the um, that kind of wrapped up in early 1950. Mm. But just the you know the negative publicity, even though he was found innocent, obviously yeah. the company was in shambles. But uh, it certainly was. Oh my god! They just, just they destroyed yeah. the company completely. Yep. I mean. Yeah. yeah, but I think uh, from a family perspective, everybody kind of scattered. So I don't think it's remembered as really a great thing for those mm. folks. Um, and even to this day, we don't really have Tucker family reunions. Um, I really? Think it, you know, that, that event, I think, really kind of separated everybody. And only recently have we kind of reconnected with, uh, with some other members of the family to, to kind of go, hey, you know, we're, we're still out here. So, it's, But uh, that, that, that brings... Beautiful. That brings me to the next step. Now, you've started working with Tucker again, am I right? Yeah. You, you yep. start, I mean, take us through the process. So, okay, so every, the, court, the, the court case has gone through. Everything basically has gone for a ball. Um, I mean, but your, your family and stuff, you guys are still in there. I mean, do, were you guys continuing? How can I put it? Was there like a lot of parts still left? Did you, were you guys getting contact by people that still wanted the cars and built the cars? What was the process after that? So not really. <laughs> um, there was, there was certainly a period after the company closed, there was a big auction where they, um, you know, sold everything down to, you know, the logo on the car is wow. actual property. I mean, they sold everything. So from, from about, you know, that period in the early fifties, Preston started working on another car, called the Carioca just after the Tucker 48 yeah. was over. And we're actually working on building that car now, but we could talk about that later. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be a really cool one. But um, all the, they, you know, all the cars were basically just prototypes, right? So yeah. I think sometimes people's perception is there was, you know, a production run of 50 cars. And when you start looking at them, especially when you're doing like a restoration or getting into working on one, they're, they're very much prototype. So really? there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, like stacks and stacks of production parts left over because everything was kind of made on a prototype basis. So there was a few leftover bodies. Um, some of the parts you can find are shared like from other cars, but really not a lot. So the process of kind of getting back into it was, was from scratch. So it wasn't, you know, we, we couldn't like, you know, prop open the old Tucker bar and just start pulling parts and things out. Yeah. So that it certainly didn't work like that. So it's uh Lots and lots of effort to remake the stuff that we can't get and, you know, try to track down the things that, that maybe we can. Because I, I first heard about you guys from Rob Ida. I mean, and I, I, yeah. I think he, he had, a, he had a, a tucker in the shop at that stage, which, which he said actually yep. still had the most pristine original interior out of all yeah, of them. Yeah, we're, yep, we're just about done with that car. So that car is number 34. Yeah. Um, and it is, it's got a completely original interior, which is shocking because it's, uh, they're wool and they don't tend to stand up very well. It's, it's wool broadcloth, but yeah. uh, so we've got that one right now that we're working on. We also have two more, um, we're working, well, 44 that we did a restoration on a couple of years ago is, is back just for some work, but then we've also started doing a restoration on uh, Tucker 29. So that one's, that one's pretty special because that was Preston's personal car. Wow. It was, it was his test car at the factory. Yeah. That one's pretty neat. But that must be amazing for you guys to still be working on that car. You know, yeah, the, it's, the, it's that's a little, it. Yeah. It's, it's like it's eerie. Little, <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's, and it's funny because like it's, it's, I wouldn't say it ever really wears off, mm. but um, it's certainly, you know, you kind of sit back and go, huh, like how, how did this happen? So it's, um, it's certainly not something we take for granted. It's, uh, yeah. It's yeah, it is a little eerie. That's a good word. <laughs> yeah, years ago, I was at a at a guy's uh, shop, and um, he worked for with Ferrari years ago, and um, he he worked and Ferrari was doing test racing, and we're having a conversation. He says to me, "So who's the the best race driver like ever?" And, yeah. um, but as, as he's talking, he opens the cupboard and he takes his box out. And I'm like, oh, for me, the best driver ever was Ayrton Senna. Uh -huh. And he hands me, he takes the cover off and he hands me uh, Ayrton Senna helmet. Oh, wow. And he, he, he hands it over to me. And I'm taking it because I've seen a lot of replicas. Uh -huh. And I'm like, wow, where did you got this? He says, I got it from Ayrton Senna. <laughs> um, yeah the source right <laughs> yeah. and I'm, i've got my hand inside the helmet and then i go his head was in here and i'm I, i'm i'm saying the story because on your side 
you're sitting behind the car and your great grandfather. That this is what he. This yeah. was his car. This is where he drove. Yeah. You know, yeah. This was everything. The other whole history. Everything is in that car. Standing there. Yeah. Like, that's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now, for granted, right? It's a it's it's a weird situation, but certainly a, certainly a cool one. So. <laughs> now, what is what's the new part? The parts that you guys are recreating. I mean, what, what was the demand? Because I mean, you started using three D printing, and, and if I understand correctly, uh, to try and replicate, or, or are you guys trying to replicate it as it was done originally? So it kind of depends on the part, right? So it's uh, we, we kind of use a whole bunch of different technologies depending on what what kind of needs to get done. And it's it's an interesting it's an interesting predicament because I mean they're the, the cars have quite a bit of value. They're pretty valuable. Yeah. When you think about um, three million dollars. You know, I heard the last time. Yeah, one, one, one sold for three million. Yeah, they they've uh, they haven't gotten quite back to that back up to that yet, but we're hoping they will. But uh, it's 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 a it's a bunch of money, but when you when yeah. you look at you know the quantity of parts on a whole car, exactly, if you had to remake everyone, you know, especially from a production tooling perspective, I mean, mm. it, it, it's not even close. So you just you just you just can't do it. So when you think about you know little pieces like the little plastic knobs on the dash and things like that, we can't, we can't spend you know forty thousand dollars per mold <laughs> on on making something <laughs> like that, especially when we you know maximum we'll ever need is 50 right yeah so exactly uh, you got to kind of get creative and figure out well how the heck am i going to make this stuff so sometimes we're able to do you know some um similar process to how the real parts were made whether you know it's like a metal casting thing or something like mm -hmm. that because those we can do pretty cost effectively in small folk quantities but when it comes to especially plastic parts um we use a lot of 3d printing um we use a lot of uh yeah, and different kinds of 3D printing. So I'm, I'm, I'm this pretty. Is uh, so cool. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> and sometimes you use like 3D printing as a final part, and sometimes you're using it as a tool, kind of to get yeah. to another step. So, for instance, those those little plastic dash knobs I talked about, I print those on on a 3D printer, but then I actually mold them in plastic, like yeah. a, a urethane plastic, so that I can do it in color and it's it's durable, and then I can put little metal inserts and things in. So it's it's a it's a phenomenal amount of time. But uh, it's, I, I guess I'm lucky in that, in that case that I'm a Tucker, because if, uh, if it was just strictly an effort, it would totally not be worth it. But, <laughs> but, but uh, <laughs> at the same time, that is a, that is a true Tucker part, because it was made by a Tucker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you right, can't yeah, get, yeah. I, I do not can't see, get else, yeah. I do not see anyone in the Ford family going in there and you know, turning out a gear knob for a master, okay? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they probably have a pretty easier way to do it because they can just throw some money at it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think that makes us a little bit unique. Yeah, for sure. Exactly, exactly. It makes you complete complete. So, what is this? The other car that you got? You want to talk about? No, what, this is an, another car that that was also produced for, through the family. And which one was this? Yeah, so it was it was actually never produced, but after so after the forty eight the Tucker 48 demise and the demise of the whole Tucker corporation. Preston was working on another call car called the uh, Tucker Carioca. Yes. And isn't that Carioca, the one that Rob, Rob Ida is working on as well? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we're working on it with Rob. It, um, I've seen sketches of that thing. That thing is it's pretty wild. Yeah. That's the, the way the, 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 uh, what was it? The fenders move everything to, uh, along with the car. I mean, that was the, like the original big design. Uh, if I'm not yeah. Mistaken. Well, that was, that was the torpedo, which was the oh. first one. Um, this is one afterward, yeah. which is it's a little two seat convertible. So there's there's actually a, an article in a, a magazine called Car Life. It was written in 1956 that Preston wrote himself about this yeah. car, and it's uh, it's it's a it's a pretty small car. So it's a hundred inch wheelbase, so uh, a little bit shorter than a modern VW Beetle. I'd love to get my hands on that article. Um, yeah, that's... yeah, they're out there. It's it's pretty cool. Ah, but definitely. we're trying to do this one completely in the in the style that they did before so we've got the whole body 3d modeled and we've uh i actually just finished with a, some help from a friend of mine cutting out a full scale 3d buck so that rob could start shaping sheet metal over and then uh we kind of did the research of, of what existed in in those magazine articles and stuff with the technical details so there's no actual engineering plans but you yeah. know referenced an air-cooled four-cylinder from franklin and some of the wow. suspension details and things like that so 
we're taking kind of the concept of what was discussed in those in those articles and turning that into tactic you know technical details to actually make the car so so got- you guys are trying to build this as historic or historically correct as as you can yeah yeah we're trying to take you know the original theme of what they wow. wanted to do and keep that keep that intact yeah oh, man, that's gonna be amazing hey Absolutely yeah it's a fun amazing. one it's uh it, it's it, it it keeps it uh the whole the kind of the whole process of figuring out well what the heck were they going to do here keep, mm. is, is really interesting because it's you know you can the body's kind of the most striking part when you get to when you get to the smaller parts like the transmission and you're starting to working out well hey they put the engine this far back how the heck are we going to get an axle in there exactly so uh, and kind it, of figuring that stuff out is pretty fun and the, the, trying to figure out the technology, I mean, the, the, you're trying to, what, figure out technology from, what, 50, 50 years ago? On Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 50, yeah, yeah, well, well more than that, right? So 60, yeah. Uh, yeah, 56, 60 years well, ago. I yeah. suck at yeah. that, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not good. Don't worry, I'm not that great either. So. <laughs> but that, and uh, is your plans just to produce that one, or is that something you guys want to get into mass production again? Uh, we're not really so much interested in mass production. That sounds more uh, making the same thing over and over, just from a yeah. creative perspective. Just as well, but it, so. you should just make fifty. Yeah, <laughs> it we, we could, Yeah, yeah. yeah you know? We're gonna we're gonna start with the one and yeah. uh, and see where that goes. So the one is hard enough. So no, gonna, uh, I mean, look, okay, if you guys are starting to do this every time, just bolt fifty. Yeah, that's yeah. It just my, stick with the, the. That's what where you could get to, and that's where you stay. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah, fifties, fifties, even from a you know from a scale of just the space you need is is different. Exactly, one, exactly. You know? Look, yeah. I mean, I I deal with um, we we've got Backdraft Cobra and all those guys here in oh, South yeah, Africa, yeah. and I, I've been through their workshops and stuff. And I mean, the amount of floor space they need. I mean, and trying to get through yeah. through everything, guys forget the infrastructure for that is absolutely enormous. Oh yeah, you know? it's staggering, right? I mean, it's uh. Yeah, I think it's easy to not think about it when you don't, you know, you're just seeing kind of the one one in front of you, but there is a huge amount of effort to go through that. Stuff. Oh, yeah, but did you look at like the, what Kuninsek and all these type of guys and people wonder, why do they make so so little of them at a time? And you're like, well, that actually takes a lot, you know? Yeah. A, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, and especially the fact that you're building something from scratch is just, yep. you know, so nothing's ever been there. So, I mean, because you guys are going through the process of figuring out, so you've got it historically correct, but it still needs to work. Yep. You know, it needs yeah, to yeah, handle geology. all of that. I mean, you, you still have proper engineering that needs to go into it. So it's a right. default, you know? Yep. Absolutely. That is absolutely insane. But now I've got a question for you. So is this now your day job? Or do you only do Tucker job, uh, Tucker work and, and parts and all this type of stuff and you know, playing with new projects or, or do you do other stuff as well? Uh, I do other stuff as well. So I have a whole full-time job on top of this. Wow. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an engineer for uh, a home electronics company. So I, I do that, you know, as a full-time job and then all this stuff happens Jeez. after that. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I keep pretty busy. So I, I can believe that. I can believe that. <laughs> But I mean, it's, it's been absolutely fascinating um, speaking to you. I mean, it's just, I, I was so excited. I, I've loved, I, I was a kid when I watched the movie for the first time. Yeah. Okay. And I, I was completely <laughs> memorized. Yeah. I, I, I think, well, how old are you now? Um, I'm 40. I just turned 40. Uh, well, I, 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 I was 10 when the movie came out. Okay. Uh, I'm 40. Then. My wife reminds me every day that I'm 40. So. <laughs> <laughs> My, my back actually reminds me, so my wife doesn't have to do it anymore. And my wife's there older. Go, yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the movie, when the movie came out, I mean, I was completely taken away from it. And then when Rob Ida started putting out the, the, the Tuckers and this type yeah. of stuff, I mean, it blew my mind. to actually, I mean, I, I've never seen one in, in real life, you know? Oh, wow. But I, growing up with, with, with a hot rod, background and stuff it was just fascinating and when i found out that there's still tucker family beamers and there's still and you guys are building cars i was so excited <laughs> it was just, <laughs> well, well, thank you. um I, I rob said to me they they're also working on something else on the on the um on the 48 aren't they on the tucker 48 they, they wanted to at one stage you wanted to do fiber i think fiberglass molds or something of them there, uh, there was a time when they were doing yeah they've, they've done some 48s 
recreations that were fiberglass Got bodies. Used for drag racing and stuff as well, I think. If I'm not, not, not yet, but uh, that's certainly on the table. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, I think. From a from a forty eight perspective, that's kind of we we've, we've kind of moved on from the forty eight to do the the karaoke. That's yeah. not to say I think we'll we'll, we'll certainly probably do uh, some more forty eights. But yeah. uh, every car that, that that's kind of one of the fun things about working with Rob is is he's such a creative person that you know. Oh, it's crazy. Doing, doing, yeah, doing the same thing doesn't really interest him. Mm. So when we you know he'll go, hey, well you know let's let's think about taking it's the same car, but let's do uh you know. Let's actually put the air cooled helicopter motor in it, or so you know something something yeah. different to make it uh, to make it special. Make it so unique, that. you know. Yeah. yeah. Will, let, let rephrase. Make it even more unique than anything right. else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, I love his work. I, I I've followed him for for such a long time. And he's such a cool guy. That that was the, yeah. the thing that got me as well. You know, you uh, social media. We see these guys and we idolize them. And when you get a chance to meet them, you know, you're like a, a little kid, you know, <laughs> you're like yeah. you're speaking to the principal and then they turn right, out right. to be nice people. You know? so, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and real people. Yeah. So it's uh, exactly, certainly exactly. That, that doesn't, that's not all of them. Right. But certainly, uh, certainly Rob and a lot of the other, and in the, I mean, you, you know, the car community, right? Like a lot yeah. of them in general, you, you don't really run into too many people that are just, you know, not that kind of like, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to sit down and have a talk with that guy. So that's, but look, uh, the, normally they, 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 how can I put it? They keep you at a distance until you start talking about cars. And then, and then you've got, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that common interest. Right? It, yeah. it takes it takes that in, uh, a Corvette drives past and you're like, uh, you know, is that a 62? It's a 64. Oh, okay. And then the conversation goes. And then like four hours later, you know, <laughs> everything is yeah. done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sean, listen, I'm not going to keep you anymore, but thank you so much for talking to me. This is oh, yeah. Hey, no problem. I enjoyed it. Um, that was great talking to you. And good luck with the project. I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, oh, thank you. And God, let me keep me up to date, man. If there's photos or anything coming out yeah. and when it hits, man, uh, I'll, I'm going to be all over that. Like you can't believe, man. I, I'm really cool. excited. Yeah, we'll, I can't wait to see it. We'll all right. Too. <laughs> all right. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Eh? Hey, okay. you too. All right. Cheers. Bye. See ya.